Hey everyone, and welcome to the first ever episode of the Sparty Update podcast. My name is Ivan Gutierrez, and I'm here with my co-hosts, Sergio Valencia and Edgar Torres. In this podcast series, we'll be diving into everything that is San Jose State Spartan football with perspective and insight from three former SJSU staffers, which if you haven't already guessed, is us three. Um, I, I think I was kind of doing some math and uh, combined, we all together bring in 10 years of uh, San Jose State football experience. Um, and in a minute, we'll get into a little bit about who we are, uh, the roles that we work with with the Spartans. And then after all that, we'll recap uh, the 2020 season. Um, I have to say that we no longer affi are affiliated with the Spartans and uh, our opinions don't reflect those of the university or the football program. So with that out of the way, uh, I'll kick it over to Sergio and we'll kind of introduce ourselves, um, what we did and um, kind of our different roles at San Jose. Hey everyone, uh, Sergio here. Uh, started at San Jose State in 2016. Didn't start with the football team until 2017 when I met Ivan in, at the Spear. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I spent what? Three seasons with them? Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, together and on the video team. Got to travel to all the away games and stuff. It was pretty dope. It's my turn. So I'm Edgar Torres. I'm one of your hosts as well. Um, I spent time uh, three years as well with the team, but a year after Ivan and Sergio left. Uh, so yeah, we were all in the video coordinating. I actually got introduced to that job thanks to Sergio. And I, from there, I met an Ivan on the way there. Um, so yeah, my experience was pretty pretty good as well. I got to travel those two years, two out of the three years that I was there. Um, met some pretty cool people, hung out with some cool people, hanging with the football team too. Like some of the guys were pretty cool outside of the program. So yeah, that's kind of like my update or I would, my intro. I would say we all pretty much went through the roughest moments in yeah, we state football. Definitely, yeah. I would say definitely, yeah, that there was one year where it just, we got murdered by what was it? Everyone. West Point? Like <laughs> 63 yeah, to three. That was my last year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, was that the game at Levi's? Yeah, that yeah, was. That yeah. was rough. That was, it was, it was hot. Yeah. It was hot. Um, and they just ran the ball for an hour. It, just, it was a quick it game. Was never, it was never <laughs> ending. But uh, that was a game where we really had to put in that third stringer, like walk in. Yeah, he was good. Um, and yeah, and me, just like Sergio and Edgar, um, I was a little bit older, or I've had a little more tenure. Uh, I came in 2015. Uh, my first year was pretty pretty dope. We went to the Cure Bowl. I didn't get to go to the Cure Bowl. I was still really new, and I was in recruiting, so I had no business being on the trip. But uh, you know, it, my first year was fun. You know, we won a lot of games, or won more than usual. Um, and then the team went and they beat, I think it was Georgia State in the first ever Cure Bowl. So that was really exciting and fun. I thought it was uh, Miami of Ohio. No, uh, no, it, it, it was Georgia State. Oh, was it really? Yeah. Unless you're thinking of Boiling Green, that was the 2012 team. Yeah, that was the 2012 team. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we all worked in the video department. You know, it was kind of interesting because when I first got into video, or I didn't even want to be into video, to be honest. Uh, I saw a flyer on campus and it was like, jumpstart your career in sports and you know, all this, this and that. And so then that's I what went. I did too. I was like, sports, football. Yeah. School. Same. Might as well make it in. Something enjoyable. And then the first guy that gave me my opportunity was this guy, uh, the recruitment coordinator at the time, Mark Baker. And I did a bunch of recruiting and it was fun. And I just really just did a lot of stuff on game days and did tours on official visits. And then I think what really kickstarted video was um, the next year, you know, they were short staffed and then um, did a video in 2016 and worked with um, our old guy Luke when he was hurt. And it was, uh, it was me and Luke. Luke. That was pretty much what it was. Shout Luke out. dog. Shout out to uh, the uh, introvert guy. Uh, I hope Luke definitely tunes into this. And that, but I think it all really started and how we all kind of came together Luke was, when, dope. was when the new uh, coaching staff who's there now, Coach Brennan, um, and then shout out Cam. And shout out Cam. Yeah, shout Cam out, was shout really out the, Cam. He was the dude that really gave us kept, all our opportunities. Yeah, he really gave us our first shot all together. Um, 
You know? And he really just let us do whatever we wanted, you know? It was kind of like creative wise, like if you have a good video idea, like go ahead and do it as long as it doesn't suck, you know? <laughs> Even though and I then, think he hated me my first year. Cause I yeah, it was, it was like every day after practice, like something was like, Edgar said something and then Cam was just like, not super <laughs> whatever uh cam's awesome he gave us all a shot um uh, you know and really it was cool you know we got to do a lot of exo stuff which if people listening to this exos is more so like the software of how players and coaches watch film and everything and we had you know filmed practices we traveled the games i don't think us, us three, us together, three no. we never got a chance you know it was me and sergio one year and then the next year it was me edgar and i think luke was Luke, Luke went a couple games and then he complained about his back turning. Yeah. <laughs> who, who, who took over for Luke? It was me and Jaden, I think. Oh, it's right. It was Jaden. Shout out Jaden. Yeah. Jaden Filipino was brother. A, yeah, Jaden was, was the homie. Still is the homie. Puta in a bowl. <laughs> so, um, so now that you know a little bit about us and what makes us a little bit qualified, even though. Or not. Uh, I bet you whoever <laughs> listens to this is like, who are these guys? They're definitely not qualified. But um, I think we, we've talked about this for a long time. We wanted to bring some attention at San Jose State. Um, especially, and, especially now. That especially we're... now. That's, that's true because, I mean, we'll, we'll get into it in a minute. But the team just, is now just hype central. Yeah. With you got Cam killing it on social media with all his staff. Like, Shout out, and, RJ. And we, we, I say we got to give Cam more credit because... His social game is so strong. I feel like it's definitely helping out with like recruiting yeah, and stuff. Sure. Oh yeah, because I remember when we were talking when when Cam was new and he was like, "There's all these schools that aren't good, but if you just saw their social media, would mm -hmm. you would be like, oh my god, this team is? Mm -hmm. They have to be like top five. They have to be ranked. Mm -hmm. And it was like you know some random like Appalachia State. I don't know, just some mm -hmm. random team. Yeah. But now that San Jose State has that great social media, which is huge. Plus you got uh, a really good team. Oh my God! It is just bread and butter. I mean, it is just and and factor in that San Jose is in the middle of the Silicon Valley, pretty much. So oh yeah, and you know you got to think beyond football. Beyond football, we're just plugging. We're not affiliated whatsoever <laughs> with the university. We're not trying to hype H the school. Intertwines, baby. But I mean, there's so much good stuff going on there that you just have to talk about it. And we're I think we'll try to be as objective as possible. We're not going to be here like some fangirls. And just, but you know, we're, we'll get into the nitty gritty of things when they're not going good. But right now, a lot of stuff is clicking really well. So um, let's get into it. A I little mean, too well. Maybe that's why <laughs> we're doing this. Um, so let's get into the 2020 season. Uh, to say that it was historic is, I would say, an it was hype. I'm it not was, gonna lie, that was hype. I mean, that. I I wasn't with the team. Near was I. I wasn't I mean, either. None, I none, I none was. of us. Yeah, we it was. Were, it was. All, it was our first year. Like all the way gone. So. The last year I worked with them, the five and seven season, I thought that was like the peak of our, like I was telling Serge earlier, I was like, five and seven, that's peak. Josh Love slinging it, Trey Walker catching it, Bailey catching it. I thought that was gonna like, okay, after this year, it's just gonna go downhill, but they brought in that kid, Starkle. Yeah, the, and the cheat code, right? Homeboy goes by the cheat well, code. What, what was it, Tw 2019 season, we were losing all the games by what six points three points yeah. like we were barely losing so barely yeah. you could you could see that there was potential to have yeah. a really great season uh we just needed to put it together it looked like we just needed starkle because yeah. starkle came into the exact same team pretty much and just blew it out of the water just yeah, yeah. And I, I feel like the team chemistry for sure i mean yeah i mean all the guys that definitely helps click. yeah when you're clicking as a, as one it's like can't stop that you had those guys because everyone they, yeah everyone had been together for a while now yeah, yeah I, I remember that the, the that campaign for um the recruiting class was like protect the shield and everyone was more or less from northern california yeah and that's what they wanted they were like we're tired of losing these guys to like oregon and these out-of-state uh universities and i think all those guys just being in the area knowing each other maybe playing with each other in high school and now you add four more years of everything i mean it all finally clicked and um and just like you said edgar i thought you know five and seven they were solid you know those, obviously all those games they lost were so close so like, close and i remember just like being behind the camera and just like heartbreaking i couldn't i couldn't i mean I, I would have to do my job and like focus on like catching the play but like at the same time we're like we're down three with a minute to go to nevada and we end up throwing a pick but or something like that couldn't convert a first down 
that was just so fucking heartbreaking. But yeah, I, I was like, damn, this is gonna be the best thing we've seen for a minute, and then behold, 2020 season. Yeah, and and that's kind of like has been the history of San Jose, sadly enough, where you would have a really good year mm-hmm. or maybe a sub a, above average year, which I would say 2019 was above average. Even though they were under 500, if you look into the numbers, I'd say that they were more or less around. Think average. about it: five games I haven't, I haven't in 2019 changed. compared to like the three years we started. Combined, it yeah. was like we only had three wins those yeah. two, three years we were there. And it was looking like, all right, it, just like you said, this was next year is going to be a rebuild, or next year it's going to go back to the same old story. Yeah, you know, losing like, the, you know, UNLV by blowouts, you know. But no, you know, so much happened and. Yeah, I think we touched on it being the freshmen now being in that senior role and also the seniors that have been there. You know, you have guys like Bailey, who, uh, Bailey Gaither, who really was, you know, feels like, honestly, he's been on on campus for like eight years. Shout out to the comm major. Yeah, he's dope. I mean, he was awesome. And he was was always there. He was always like, man, this guy, if he could just stay healthy or just so quick and it finally all clicked. I mean, he had that catch. Uh, I still think about it. Uh, that one-handed catch was that against uh, Army in 2019? Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was there. I remember seeing that. That I went crazy for that because it was, it was a, it was a tip pass and like yeah. the guy was draped on him and I don't know how the hell he caught that, but it was. Is the one on his knees? Yeah, yeah, the one where, where he's sliding and then he, he yeah, tipped yeah. himself and he caught it with yeah. both his knees down. That, that was Unreal. Catch. So like it, it was all there, you know, all all these different elements of like this is a good team, this is a good team. And uh, it all finally clicked. And, um, you know, obviously having a quarterback is huge. You know, in past years, and I would say even in those years where uh, the, the team was competing and they won a bowl game in a cure bowl, you know, I would still say quarterback wasn't their biggest strength. Mm-hmm. You know, I think at the time, Kenny Potter was the quarterback. And he was very athletic, made plays, took some nasty hits. But I Shit. don't think he's J-Love not... J-Love took nasty hits too, man. And J-Love, yeah. Jordan Love was... Uh, times was just incredible. Yeah, but sometimes you can only get hit, you know, so many times. And now having that quarterback who is very athletic, you know, he has power five experience. Um, he has all the genetics and the character. And he brings a lot of swag to the team. We also got to give credit to the O line, though, because in the O line, yeah, yeah it, most of the guys were are already older, like upperclassmen, so yeah. they, they had been playing with each other for a while. Um, so the O line finally, twenty twenty, took the next step, which allowed Starkle to, you Dude, know, he, actually he st- had he had time because you, you there talk, were some games where he had time. He had, sure. yeah, he for sure he had time. And what was it like? I was saying we were saying about the year that West Point beat us by like sixty three. I remember just at one point it was like they would get through, J Love would get murdered, bring in the backup, same thing. Backup would get murdered, and that's why they had to bring in the third stringer, walk on. I always felt like J Love was concussed every game, just <laughs> taking the hits. Remember that Wyoming game when it was snowing and he got crushed? And I, oh my! I radioed in. I was like, I think J Love might be dead. Yeah, I remember that because <laughs> I was in the press box and I had the radio on, and everyone, all the writers, looked at me laughing. I was like, okay, one, don't laugh. This dude is getting killed. Also, he radioed back to me. And he's like, Edgar, shut up. The coaches and the, the, the writers are hearing you talk, and I was like, Ooh. how am I supposed to know? That was just, I'm just stating what I just saw. Yeah, that, and, and Jay Love was great. I mean, you know, didn't get drafted, but, I mean, still made, you know. Still on the Rams? He, 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 no, he got no. cut. He was a Josh? undrafted free agent. Shout out Josh. You he know, on Hard Knocks, too. Oh, he's on uh, Hard Knocks. Yeah, he was. You know, he's from uh, that school out in Long Beach, uh, Long Beach Poly. Was he? Yeah, yeah that's I think he, he, he played with Juju, I want to say. I think, like, like him Which, and Juju. With, with Coach, then. Coach Pierce, right? Uh, yeah. What was so, his name? He uh, was from the Giants, the linebacker. Uh, Antonio Pierce or something? Yeah, yeah, that's Oh, yeah. He's, yeah. On, he's on ASU now. Yeah, he's at ASU he's now. A oh. linebacker, he's a linebacker. Coach. Oh, I didn't know he was. He's, like, he's, he's like, big-time recruiter. Oh, okay. He gets, like, all those five stars. He's yeah. at ASU? Yeah. And they're still trash? <laughs> okay, don't, don't let my friends hear you say that. Oh, my bad. Well. Hey, Brandon, are you, though? Hey, but, he's nice. Yeah, yeah, he is. Um, but yeah, so so things finally clicked with the quarterback. 
And I think you can credit a lot to to the coach, um, the Gundy. quarterback coach last year. Shout out Gundy. Shout out Gundy. Still have uh, Ryan Gundy Gunderson, with my fantasy team, dude. Who's now at a, you know, now at UCLA, which you know, I mean, it was only a matter of time before Congrats. he got back. You know, he, I mean, he was a great quarterback at Oregon State. Killed it at Nebraska. Came on over to San Jose. And I mean, if you really think about it, at the time when he came over, I mean, you had Montel who was really athletic, you guys Whoa. remember Montel, yeah. so good, right? But I mean, just, I don't know if it was just, you know, him as a person, just didn't want to put in that extra work or what, but it was like, man, it was just him and Jayla battling it out. And- It was like a different dude starting every I week. I think injuries yeah. played a part, right? Too. Injuries, you just had so much going on. Yeah. But I think j Love's last year, he got the most out of, you know, someone who was a veteran who's been around for a while. And then, can sling it. I'll give him that though. That guy can sling it. Yeah, no. There's and that no was guy. already what year three, year three with Gundy with. Yeah. With Brennan, um, but we switched what OCs after one season. So it was year two with McGiven. McGiven. McGiven's first no, year McGiv- was twenty. McGiven was still there when I was there. I think he's still there. But, that was, but I'm saying like that Josh Love, his like last year, that was like his, his best. His second year. Yeah, second so it was, year it, yeah, it was like f- the first time we had some sort of consistency <laughs> yeah. uh, as far as like offense is system. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it was a seamless transition with Nick Starkle. Like it felt like you would have thought Nick Starkle was there for like three years. Exactly. I mean, he just, game one was just tearing it up. You know, what? it was like, where is this coming from? And with COVID and everything, like his first year, not really having a real. Do we awesome. we we really have to touch on COVID? Like that it, to think they had the season they had in in the year of 2020 when like everything was shut down, COVID was shut. The Bay Area itself was like the, the like mo- the most restricted place. They had to go out to Humble to do their their camp, yeah. and then come back to San Jose, and then. A few weeks later, they have to leave. Uh, uh, where did they go to? Vegas? They went yeah, to, they yeah, went to they Vegas. Yeah, they set a resort in Vegas. Well, they went to Hawaii. Yeah. They oh, yeah. Hawaii. A home game in Hawaii. And then they went to Vegas, which was already occupied by uh, New Mexico. So yeah. they were sharing UNL. This is crazy. They were sharing UNLV's old stadium with New Mexico because you couldn't. And they were staying in the same resort as New Mexico. Yeah. This is crazy. I mean,. I'm glad I, you brought up 2020. Because talk about adversity and to still put on the season that you did. And I think that just goes back down to to the coaches. And Coach Brennan is, you know, one of the, my favorite coaches I've Good. ever worked with. I mean, he is nice guy. fantastic. Super nice guy. He's a great a guy. guy. He's a great coach. And really allowed for no excuses. Because I, I think if you look around, even at Power 5 schools, I'm going to say, like, look at Michigan. It felt like every week they were complaining, oh, we can't play because of COVID. You know, oh, you had a random, like, uh, Wisconsin. Terrible, though. They, I mean, I feel like San Jose State did the right thing and, like, they didn't visit any family. And, well, like, that, yeah, that goes, that, that shows yeah, what coach, great, yeah, great of a leader did. that Brennan yeah, is. Cause, program did. Cause, I feel like Michigan was, like, less lenient, and that's why they got oh, of that ass outbreak and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, the tone is set from the top, and it just trickles down. And so... Other schools not taking COVID serious, or if they were taking it serious, they weren't taking their um, their protocol serious. But San Jose State, I mean, I don't think it was until the bowl game, which, you know, I think it was a result of maybe players going home and then coming back, and then it yeah, I, like I, I coaches would, were out, yeah. some players were out. But even on the grand scheme of that's just one game. But if we're looking at the Overall, six other games, yeah. I mean. You, we all know what it takes to get into a football season. I mean, day in, day out. And not only that, but avoiding, you know, COVID. COVID. Yeah. You know, that's ridiculous. Yeah. And they made no excuses. They played a shortened season, which shortened season or not, it doesn't matter. Everyone else is still playing on the same uh, circumstances. Mm-hmm. And they, they, did, they just made they, most. They did. You and know, you can't. Shout out to the Spear for doubting them. Ooh. Scumbags. Oh, oh. <laughs> what, what, what what they say? They say it was they said because uh, San Jose State's playing well and doing, like have a winning record because not other schools are playing their best players due to COVID, like them opting out and stuff oh. like that. Wow, that, that's that's clickbait. Scumbags. Uh, I, I want to hear what, what if, if that got back to the coaches or players or what. Oh, but that, yeah, that's I think I think players were retweeting it. Like it's like that's just a joke. That's like, ridiculous. Just a joke tape. It's like yeah. 
They're doing, I mean, it's not their fault. They're, they they ended up being healthy and having all the guys in and no one opting out. It's like not their fault. So yeah, no, I totally agree. Shout out to Spear scumbag. Yeah, the, the the media was for sure giving them a lot of backlash when they came back from Vegas. Um, just because of the whole COVID protocols, yeah. right? And like you're putting it, you're putting their families gotta, and the kids at risk, and then you're gonna go back and play a game. But in the end, I do think that the you need de- that family. Yeah, the decision yeah. for Brennan to bring the team back was I think the right thing. The right thing. It was a good decision that he made. I guess since we lost, it, some people can say it was a bad decision. But yeah. Overall, I would say in hindsight, it's easy to say that. Yeah. You yeah, know, but, but my God, if you're away from your family for, for so six long. weeks. It's More plus, than six weeks. Dude. Yeah, the, the sixth season plus the games that were canceled, plus yes. training camp and everything that goes into the off season, and you know, if there was no cases, and let's we rem- can't speak in hypothetical. Let's know? let's remember the, these guys are still in school. They're doing online learning, just yeah. like it's the worst. Yeah, so now, do you're classes. you're doing online classes in a different state. You know, you're yeah. you, you're still expected to keep up your grades and stuff. Yeah. And work out, stuff. work out, like yeah. Just the circumstances, I think, is what made this season even like more special. I think I would have brought my PlayStation. So, I no, I I totally agree. No, I definitely would. What do you mean hooking up to that hotel Wi-Fi and just like playing? Oh, I, I, that would be awesome. The, hey, those Madden tournaments were insane. If we were stuck in a hotel for three weeks in Vegas, well, I would be dead. <laughs> Not with Edgar. Actually, Not with Edgar. Uh, we'd be sneaking out. Yeah, yeah. There's no Kinda way you're keeping me locked in in Vegas. Yeah. I don't care how far we are. Anyways, but so we touched on the season, and as we mentioned, uh, doubted the team, and it's easy to doubt, you know, a team on a heightened or a shortened season. I mean, me, I'm and, a Dodger and, fan. Yeah, and given and, and given their past history. Right, and everyone gives the Dodgers. Um, Grief for playing a shortened season, which whatever, Shut which whatever. Up, right? you, your we're not, we're not talking hey, this, about that. This is a San Jose State yeah. football I'm podcast. Saying, about no, I understand. I'm just saying. I'm just saying that a lot of people give them grief for their championship because it was a shortened season. Just like the Lakers championship don't count. That right? was the Corona. Cup. Okay, okay. Now we're now, now now we're going bonkers. But my question to you guys is: At what point? What game did you guys watch, and did you think this team's legit? The Nevada game, I think. No, nah, maybe. No, no. I was San Diego State, dude. That's that's the game that showed me like, oh, we're for real, because it's like a short week. You're playing I on think a Friday. It been the first game too with with, with, with Air, Air Force. Force. Yeah, but but San I, thought Diego. I thought they were just gonna pound the ball on us, and it, it seemed like that for a little yeah. bit. And I was like, dude, they're just gonna pound and pound and pound. Yeah, but you you know uh, we got the stops though. Watching football for so long, you know there's those fluke games like where, oh yeah, oh uh, no like, doubt yeah. that like a team wins when you know they shouldn't have. Okay, but, so they they played Air Force right the first game. Yeah, but San Diego State, like I was saying, that's the game that really like I was like oh they're for real because Starko goes out what the first play he gets yeah it, he gets he a that's right he did. Yeah. yeah Nash, Nash came in Nash. I was like I was like dude this game's over like there's no way like. Uh, and then Nash like just showed up. I was like, "Oh, boy, can sling the ball. He could run. Like, it. He he led. So nasty when he runs. Though. He led the team in passing and rushing that game. That's insane. That I mean, that, Nick Nash is a fantastic quarterback. And if Nick Starkle didn't come you back, know, didn't come back, I, I think easily Nick Nash is a starter. Uh, he came in as an athlete. What am I talking about the Nevada game was like the second to last game. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh. Okay, yeah, you might be right. The San Diego game for sure, because that those those three years that I was there, those three seasons, I was only there at school for two years, but I, I helped three years. They had San Diego. They lost to San Diego in 2018 by a, a, a field goal, and then I think the next year they lost by another like six points. I re- my first year was uh, the Rashad Penny year where the, oh he, my God. he had like 300 yards. Yeah, that was in, the home game. <laughs> what two quarters? Yeah, no, at half, even, they, they, at they, they sat him. It, he, he broke like 280 yarders, and I was like, "All right, well, this is game. Good yeah. day, have a good night." So um, I would have to agree and say it was the San Diego State game because I had been at San Jose starting 15, followed them for you know years before that or whatever, mm-hmm. and we have got embarrassed by San Diego State every single year. And it wasn't just like they a, were talking spicy too before we played them, and and they had all the reason to be, you know, they. We it's been non-competitive, and for San Jose State, on a, I'm looking at it right here. They play on a Friday, coming off a Saturday game against New Mexico. I think at, for me that was like, all right, 
they're legit. I didn't think they were going to be undefeated legit, to be honest. Same. But I definitely thought, all right, we got something like cooking. Like there's something going on. Yeah, for sure. And and then go to to Edgar's point. He was talking about the Nevada game. I would say that was like another statement game for, for San Jose State. Boise State would have been, but that game was canceled due to COVID. Scumbags. Oh, can we talk about that real quick? I would be so mad. I would, if I, I can't believe that that was like, what is it? Like a three hour flight there just to get said, nope, we got to go three hours back. Yeah. But the day of, so you get ready, you're hyped Friday. You're saying, oh yeah, you did. They did spend the night there, huh? They spent the night, woke up. I want to say, I think RJ and the creative team got to the stadium. And we're because they everyone gets there long before yeah, the players they, do. Yeah, media does. And they found it. out at the stadium like games um, canceled. I didn't even know that. I, like, that I was hyped for that game. Too. I, mean, I was, like, I, oh, I was too. I was ready. I was I like, money isn't published, and you don't see the budget or whatever. But I am sure a lot of money was lost. You had to pay for that hotel, the meaningless hotel. The flight. You don't get a kickback from the advertisement and the televised game. That game should have been. I, it was a no contest, so it was. Like it never happened, but I think San Jose would, should have been credited a win with that. Yeah, that's, it should have that's been weak. Well, come on, like yeah. that—that's ridiculous. Making, so, making a whole team fly out there, stay out there, then day of game, you're like, nope, one dude happened to be like around people that had COVID, so you got to cancel the game. It's like manage your team. So I, yeah, I was really looking forward to that Boise State game because I thought it was going to be the the game that really showed us who San Jose State really is. Oh yeah. Nervous. Oh, um, I was, I was, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, shit, bro. I and then, like, but, but I think the Nevada game is the one that showed us, like, okay, this team is for real. Because those two games they canceled, I, I knew that, that was like, damn, those are the two hardest weeks. Fresno, then Boise. That, yeah. But I, I, I mean, think, is, I is think Fresno, hand, Fresno I think, even good? No, nah, but I, you, no. you know, you never know when it, you play yeah. your rivals. Yeah, true. You're always extra hype. But I, I thought that was going to be a test, but. I think we would have handled Fresno if we did play them. I think we would have handled them by by double digits. Yeah, and then Nevada showed us like our character because and, and, and they came back from weren't they down like something? Yeah, like, it was in like Nevada. What? No, yeah, the Nevada game. It was like what? they were down like 13, 10 like, points, like two touchdowns. It was I like think. fourteen. And, and, and they, they got the they got that stop at the goal line with the fumble. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we could not stop their freaking <laughs> running backs. <laughs> their running backs were just like were just pinballs. Balls. Yeah, the first half the running backs were all over just. Pounding the fuck out of the linebackers and everybody, and, and you know, and we'll get into the defense because we haven't even touched on defense. Oh, we have not. We have not the defense took the, the step. Oh, they bro. took the step this year. I the the right of four hundred eight. Hey, Kate Hall. The the way they played with swag this year. I think yeah. that I had more fun watching their defense in year this year than I did watching their offense because the defense like like every player was playing with like some sort of pride yeah. like like for well, Hoko and. Hall are just going going off. Do our our corners lock down safeties? They were nice. They were super. And just nice. in that box. I mean, looking at it right here, you got three first team All Mountain West, and picks. You, got, you got defensive player got, of the year, and Cade Hall. Cade Hall is a freaking beast, dude. dude. I, thought was, I thought he was wrong his freshman year. Dog, like, dude, played a true freshman. What is I, he from Bellamine? You know, Be- Bellamine. Yeah. Bellerman like holding down the. And he was leg. so skinny his he, freshman year. Yeah, he was little. And I was like, "How is this dude tearing it up as a freshman?" And he's like so small, like f- small for a DN because he's a big dude. But yeah, dude, no, and he big though. Over yeah, the years, got and, and this past year, dude, he's a beast. I mean, yeah. he he just has that high motor that like I don't know. I feel like he, he gets beat right off. If he gets beat off the line, Should his we? skills and technique will. Find a way to somehow. Should, should we make the lazy comparison and say next Jared Allen? <laughs> Jared Allen. <laughs> I, you know, I would say that's fair. I mean, I think hey, have barrier to, boys. Yeah, you have Jared to Allen, Los Gatos. Yeah, I, I think that, that you can say they're a little bit like undersized. We got. So we, they make up for it. In three boys. We got. We got to reach out to K see if he can wear number sixty nine next year. Yeah, that that would be dope. I mean, I I don't know in a college if they're gonna allow sixty nine. I, I nice. think that's a number. I nice. Thought, Nice. Nice. But uh, but that defense is unreal. And I think, it, I mean, it, it finally clicked. Just like we were talking about the offense, it finally clicked. I mean, uh, Derek Odom. Just both sides. Like, you, like we were talking about both sides just found it this year. I, uh, I'm i going to throw myself on the bus, I guess. I was a hater on, on Odom. I was like, after watching the the first two, three years, I'm just like, dude, our, our defense is just trashed. I was like, we we need to make some changes, the, but well, you know the game. So my last year, the game against Hawaii, I was just like, dude, dial something up because our D line is not getting any pressure. 
but I mean, and hey, that's what I don't I, know anything. Hey, that's I'm what I like about this year. This year, he he made those adjustments. I felt like like that Nevada game, right? Like we couldn't stop the run, so he started dialing it up. Like mm-hmm. we're we're gonna stop this run, throw it on us. I dare you. And so just those adjustments, uh, I I felt like were were pretty good this year. Yeah. Yeah, and just the the pressure that Felco and Kate Hall were bringing. I mean, that was just like Alden Smith and uh, Justin Smith. It was just killing it. I mean, the, sad. You know, I mean, I, I don't know. Sad days. Lower days. But it was just like, it was just that one-two punch. Like, if you want to run it on one side, well, hey, you have Kate Hall. You want to run the other, it's Fayoko. Like, they were just killing it. And then not only... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And not even that, right behind them, you had uh, Kyle Harmon. Ooh. Right dude, at Enyog. Kyle dude. Harmon is a beast. beast. Dog. I'm right telling at you. Enyog, right? Uh, I, know, I, know from, I know he's from the Bay because we, we flipped him from Cal. He was originally he's gonna stocked go to Cal. in like any uh, area, right? Something like that. Well, because he went to like Antioch, Freedom, right? Freedom High School. Each other. I, I, uh, really? Oh, I don't know. I don't know where he's you from. Don't you don't tell you. me, dog. You, you live over there. You don't know. I sure did. <laughs> I know that's why I'm telling you. We're nowhere near Antioch. They're but all, they're uh, all the same to me. But he's a beast. Uh, the defense finally clicked, um, and of course, you know, you had uh, Trey Jenkins. You know, second team uh, All Mountain West. Killing what number it. is he? Number twenty-seven. That's a safety, right? Yeah, yeah. I. He's what? Yeah, I know you're talking about. Him. Trey Webb, though. I feel like Trey Webb. He Trey was, Webb. Him, him, and Harmon were. I would say like the, the, the hard monsters. Yeah. Because like their swag is dogs. Wild. And that's the thing too. It just looked like the team, the defense. Obviously, we talked about the offense, how everything was clicking, but the defense. It just felt like they were just like us versus the world mentality. Yeah. yeah. Even was, the freshman. Uh, who is that freshman? Number eighteen. The, the corner? 26 or 18, that was just like, damn, the that, guy, that guy was nice. The dude from Kansas, That right? guy was just everywhere. Yeah. The dude that returns came. two or something like that. And he's, well, weight-wise, he's small, only a, a buck 70, but he's six Jeez. foot. Uh, I thought he was like our best corner because you can put him on the island on any receiver. He was, he was shutting people down. Yeah, he did. Yeah, and not to, like, I guess – Say he's better than Nehemiah Shelton, but I thought Shelton was also holding his own this whole year. I I, I thought we had two lockdown corners. Like really, I thought so. Was he on the left side? Because I know Shelton was on the right, right? The eighteen dude. It, it, it was fresh. always it was always eighteen and twenty three oh, on okay, the outside. Okay. Well, here's one thing that stuck out um, for defense was that opponents' points per game was under twenty. So the defense gave up on average nineteen point nine points. That was 15th in the country. That's rare. Oh, wow. I mean, 15th in the country. I mean, and we're getting sacks too. And that's with sacks. Yeah, it was just. Kate, like, Kate Hall won uh, games for us. Single handed. Yeah. Like single handedly. Was that the Nevada game? Just It was back to back. Boise and Nevada, right? No, back to back sacks. Yeah, I think it was the Nevada game. Yeah. I think they're switch. I, was, I think they're trading off. Like, I think one. Like one sack, it would be Cade. Next sack would be Fajalco, like back-to-back plays. And then Cade would just go off the next two sacks or something like that. It was crazy. Yeah, it, it was definitely a fun time. You know, it, it, for me as someone who, or I, I guess I can speak for all of us and you guys can touch in, but I think I finally had a sense of pride of saying like, I'm from San Jose State. You know, we're tearing it up. Sparty up, baby. So this is this is um, where like, I guess us working with San Jose State kind of plays in because I always thought we were better than what our record showed. Oh like, yeah, totally. Maybe that's just like being around the team and actually seeing them practice every day and putting in that work. And just like the results weren't coming. And it was just like, inside I took even more pride because it was like, I knew that we were way better than what our record was showing. And I just wanted the, this past season to happen. So we, <laughs> so we can show, show the world that like we're for real. Like we actually have some talent. We're a school that you can go to. You don't have to go to to Berkeley. You don't have to go to Stanford. We're the we're the Harvard of the West. You feel me? Yeah. No, and <laughs> no I just staying at Stanford. So I totally agree because as uh, we play Stanford soon, right? We don't play Stanford. No, USC. USC, USC uh, week one or week yeah. zero, whatever you want, to, or yeah. week two. No, week hey. two because it. And yeah, we'll, yeah, we get it. We get a game before. We'll, we'll get into that um, later on. Later on in the series, we'll, we'll break down. Um, the schedule and, and everything like that. But as as someone who went to San Jose State and we all were at practice every single day and then we would see the end result and get blown out on Saturday. It was so frustrating because you would see like, man, 
if one thing would have changed, if this happened instead one of play. that, it would just one get play. literally the little things like, oh, just like bad calls or just like, just bad plays or just like fumbles and stuff like that. You're like, damn, we could have had that. A missed assignment. Yeah. Missed yeah. Assignment, yeah. But then it was like to see everything, it was almost like, uh, I don't know, it was just like, I was just waiting for something bad to happen last year. Yeah. It was like, cause, same. Because I was yeah. like, this is, things are going too good. Exactly. Like, 3 and 0. I mean, behold the final game against Ball State. Well, yeah. But, you know, but yeah, but that... even, even with Ball State, I mean, um, that didn't have the result, you know, we obviously you would want. But I would still say that like, that's just a small blemish in this like historic season. Yeah, but like you said, we, I was I was for sure I was like, oh, what what's gonna happen today? Like, we might be winning, but I for sure think something's bad's gonna happen. You know, and obviously you want to win a bowl game and you want to come really end the season undefeated. But I was like, after they beat Boise State, I thought I was that was like, I'm, I don't care. I was yeah. like, honestly, this is the bowl game. I was talking spicy to those Boise fans. You know, I, I was I was kind of down for them not even to play a bowl game. Yeah, I was like, that's a high. They would have Boise ended it State. right there. Oh my god, undefeated. We beat. I wanted the U.S. Well, what was it? UCF with the undefeated season. Oh yeah, they crowned them national champs. Their own national champs. Yeah, Alabama won. But here's the here's the bright spot about us losing to Ball State. It's gonna show our team that they, you know, like yeah, yeah you won the the Mountain West championship, but then you got blown out in the in the bowl game. So yeah. it's like you, we had all this like excitement, all this emotion cut, riding off of that Boise State but game. But do you think Ball you, State wins if we're fully healthy? No. Oh no way! No way! Not at all. But at the same time, it, it, it you, you know you always need to lose those games. I hate teams that go undefeated because it's like it you don't it doesn't the the you don't have that losing game in your record to show you like like you're not as good as you think you are. There's things you can be working on. So I'm sure after beating Boise State after what four, Thir- fourteen thirteen, years? 13 games. Uh, they had never beat Boise. Yeah, so so if you think put that in perspective, we were, it was the first time we beat Boise State in the last thirteen years, fourteen years, and as a team, you're probably riding high. You're just like so high. You're just like we've, we 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 climbed especially, this mountain. Especially since especially since Boise State is the the number one. The yeah. If you think of Mountain West, you think of Boise State. That's 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 their that's fucking, true. That's their conference S- since the Statue of Liberty. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree with that. That's why when they beat Boise State, I was like... We're for real. And right after that, you saw a lot of teams opt out. And I was like, okay, San Jose State's going to opt out, most likely. Nah, I didn't but think they were going to. You didn't think they were going to... I, 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 I if, if, if you... Okay. This, if you've been bad for so long and then you get a chance to play for a bowl game, I think you, you take play, it. Yeah. You take it. Okay. Yeah. Because my last year, we were, what, we were floating... Well, we were five and six... And we needed that one win to be bowl eligible. Yeah. Oh, they're, yeah. they're like, we're going 6-6, six six, we're going to go to a bowl game. doesn't matter. Well, that's what I kind of, I guess, you know, now that I think about it, I guess you're right. Because uh, the Cure Bowl, they were under 500. They were the first team ever. Yeah, wasn't it like ever. five and like, like something, like six and something? Yeah, yeah. They were, I want to say five and six yeah. or something. Or, yeah. or four and, it, it was something like that. Yeah, four and six. But, like and I want to say like typically, unless you're playing a big, big bowl game and you're a big program, you lose a lot of money. So I thought with COVID, um, with having no fans, you know, not a lot of revenue, yeah. which I already don't get a lot of revenue. I was like, they're not going to play. But either way, you know, and, um, and even the- with that loss, I would still say this San Jose State team, I would go on a stretch and say I'd put them up against any other San Jose State team. I would put like them ever? against, obviously, the Cure Bowl team. Oh, yeah. The Military Bowl team. What about, what, what was the team? against the David Fales team? David Fales team. That was the 20, 2012 team. I, I would say it's very similar. Uh, they were both. That was the. That was the well, military bowl. The military bowl, yeah. Was like ten and two, right? Or? Ten and two. Yeah. So that so that year um, they were ranked twenty one. And then this year was what twenty three. Twenty four. Twenty four. They ended the year twenty four. Well, we got. We got. We got shafted by the. By the ranking committee. Yeah, but. Uh, Chris up there. But I would really put this team against any other team, and, and obviously, I mean, there were some teams early, early in football where they were undefeated. They were you can talk about the golden era at San Jose from '73 to, you know, that's a different type of football. It's a different type of football, but I would say this is probably the best San Jose State team ever. 
factoring winning percentage, I mean, just based on winning percentage, they're the best team since 19, since... Ever. Uh, Wasn't it ever? Like, we didn't well, go undefeated. I, the 1939 team, uh, <laughs> I know, I know. I'm just saying... I, I, Bro, I'm my just parents saying, weren't born yet. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, I know it's pre-World War II, I'm just <laughs> saying... <laughs> I'm just saying that that team went undefeated. Yeah, I think, they weren't even wearing face masks. They won like them. 12, but that's why since 1950, which is generally about when people start taking football serious, yeah, yeah. they are the highest winning percentage, even with a shortened schedule. Yeah, yeah. So I would say it's a historic team, bowl game or not, uh, bowl game win or not. Um, this game, this team was fantastic, um, and I think that's why you know this podcast really is um, why we wanted to bring it is because I think the team needs more media attention. I mean, they definitely do, the team for how good they are, even at the peak of their win, they were still talked about after the two other Power 5 schools in our area. You know, we have the Niners. You have so many teams going on that San Jose, even, they, even us being ranked, I feel like it was kind of just glossed over. Yeah, like, oh, look at was, number 24. For sure. like, you watch the San local State. news and they'll talk about the Warriors. And, oh, by the way, San Jose State's ranked like 21. Like, okay, I would say like that should any yeah, other team. Because the Warriors stunk. Stink. You know. Stink this year. And it, was, and it was. No um, slander, please. It, it, we just want to bring some more media of attention. You know, the the Mercury does a good job about covering them. We got some other news outlets. The Spear covers them, which is a you know college Scumbags. publication. Uh, the Daily, but we, I feel like the more this people talk about the team, the more hype around the team. Um, Let me just give a quick shout out though to uh, to YouTube account Harris Highlights. Do you guys know who that is? Mm -mm. No, not really. No, nah, so so this is more like a. Uh, account I started following years ago because the dude creates highlights for players that are going to be in the NFL draft, right? And so he's expanding his YouTube channel to like actually create videos like other than just highlight videos. Yeah. So like at, at the end of this year, he, st he started making videos like, oh, the most underrated team in, in college football this year in San Jose State was he made a like a specific video for San Jose State wow. just highlighting like the incredible season they had so uh, definitely encourage everyone to check that out that was a pretty good video and give Harris highlights a, a follow or a, a sub <laughs> yeah no and that's cool that I always felt like for for a long time especially during the video games I think you back when uh, uh, EA made the games. You you would see a lot of comments with San Jose when they got a shout out from like Uni Swag or someone like, oh, mm -hmm. this was like my favorite uniform. You know that, you know, of, in college, yada yada. Mm -hmm. And with, I know the game's coming back, but losing that kind of media attention. Uh, San Jose State. I mean, I don't know why, but they played like the most random time, like a 7:30 kickoff. Like yeah. no one on the East Coast is gonna watch that. You know, like only people care about that game are the two teams playing and like where's betting in Vegas. So I think- Or whoever went to school. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, I feel like, you know, there, there's a lot of hype around the team. You know, we'd like to bring some attention to that, talk about them, break them down, um, using the little expertise that we have. Um, and it, it, it's exciting, you know, I think this team is really uh, gonna get tested this year. You know, we'll get into the schedule as I mentioned earlier. It's not going to be an easy schedule, you know. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it, but uh, in a different we got, episode, we got the pretty boys from LA first game, yeah. USC, we're about oh, to the put, second game, though. The we're first about to put game them on is casting the first game. It's the uh, it's uh, oh, it's their first game, USC's first game, U USC's first game. We have like that play for pay or the play for pay game, yeah. Uh, Who it's like their first game. Uh, I, don't, I don't have it here with me, it's it's like uh, like some. D1A, I think Northern Colorado or Northern Oh, yeah, Arizona. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. well, we'll get into this yeah. in a yeah, different yeah, episode. Yeah. We'll get into that. Relax. Um, so I, I think that's a good, um, first, you know. First episode. Good episode. You know, we're going to wrap things up here. Um, you know, this, as we mentioned, this is a long time coming. We've wanted to do this for a few years. Um, and then hopefully, you know, we'll just build up on this. It's going to be a series. We'll talk about the coaching changes. We'll talk about the roster. I know... You know, not a lot happened with new guys, but we'll talk about that in the next episode. We'll get into the se the season, break down the opponents. Any final thoughts, for you guys, before we wrap things up? No, I mean, it's just a pilot, so I think yeah. I think we talked long enough about what we expected and like 
what we wanted to talk about about the hype season of the 2020 San Jose Spartans. Yeah. People. For for episode one, thing went pretty smooth. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, thanks everyone for listening. If you are listening, appreciate Hi. you. Hi, mom. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, closing thoughts. Yeah. Thank you everyone uh, for tuning in and sticking with us. Uh, this went a little bit longer than. Uh, we first planned out, but I guess that's the, the beauty. Don't lie, you want to hear our voices. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, thanks for tuning in. This was the first ever episode of the Sparty Update podcast. Oh, Serge, you got something to say? Yeah, and if you are listening and you happen to be like in some sort of creative, like you make beats, music, uh, videos or whatever, reach out to us. Uh, we would love to collab. Obviously, we need a, an intro to the, like an intro anthem yeah. to, to this yeah. pod, a closing song. Uh, where's, where's RJ at? RJ, RJ I was specifically same. talking to I you. Know. Hey, <laughs> hey, RJ, stop doing videos. If you want to start doing some beats, like, bro, hook well, up. Well, not even that. Like, even for, like, our Instagram, because I, I know we're going to try to work out an Instagram account. Um, yeah. Uh, I think we can do a lot of creative stuff with this. Um, but, yeah, if you want to help out, reach out. Yeah. All right. On that note, thank you, everyone. Uh, please tune in next week or next time. Uh, we'll talk about next week. Yeah, next week we'll talk about um, I will be in town. the players, coaches, and uh, everything that <laughs> happened that didn't happen in the off season. And then um, from there, we'll just take it on to different ideas randomly. Um, and yeah, thanks for tuning in. Sparty up, baby. Sparty up. Sparty up.